Okay, let's record to the cloud. Okay, so uh, our question, number 30 in 1.3, is can we have three vectors in the xy plane have a dot product smaller than zero, a dot product smaller than zero, and a dot product smaller than zero? Uh, and then he says something about, we don't know this, he doesn't know this answer for xyz space. Okay. That seems legit. Uh, let me get out of space. Here's space. Pretty good with this. Okay. Now, uh, what does it mean for the dot product to be smaller than zero? Negative. It's negative. Yes, it's negative. Is there a more startling intuition for that? Uh, that the cosine theta is in the negative x direction. Uh, maybe. Okay, so let's uh, let's examine u dot v is smaller than zero. Uh, Jacob observes that this means it's negative. That is correct. Uh, Jordan wants to say something about this in terms of cosines. Uh, which I think is probably a good idea. So let's consider u dot v in terms of cosines. So it's the magnitude of u times what? Magnitude of v. Times the magnitude of v times? Cosine theta. Perfect. Cosine of theta where theta is the angle between them. Now, if zero is supposed to be bigger than this, Let's consider some pieces. This piece, whoa, that was a shit bracket. This piece, that was still a shitty bracket. This piece, perfect, beautiful bracket. This piece, U, is what? Positive. Yeah, that, that sucker is positive. This piece, V, well, mag V, is also positive. Yeah, that thing's also positive. So if this thing stands a chance in hell of neg being negative, where does it have to come from? The cosine. Yeah, exactly. So this must be negative. Everybody with me on that? Okay, now next question. How much trigonometry do you remember? A good amount. Cool. Uh, when is cosine negative? Past 90 degrees. Second and third quadrant. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Perfect. Yeah, uh, so the cosine is negative past 90 degrees. So this is thetas have to be bigger than 90 and smaller than 270, 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. So that would be quadrants 2 and 3. Is that, that's what you said, right, Karen? Yeah, uh, between its second and third quadrant is negative, and first and fourth quadrant is positive. Yeah, perfect. Uh, do you use a mnemonic for that? Mnemonic? Like, what's that? Like, do you have a phrase that you remember? Some students do. No, like I just kind of remember now, like, you know, the first quarter in all positive, second quarter in sine, third quarter in tangent, fourth quarter in is cosine. And then. Oh, okay. So you're, there's a, what is it? All students take calculus or some garbage that you, some people use? Yeah. yeah. I think, I think Our, there was like one, something like this, but I don't remember it. I yeah, remember yeah. cast, and I also remember the way Karen's talking about where like cosines x, sines y, tangents, just the slope of those. Yep, perfect. So if I had to do this, I'd be like, okay, these happen at pi over twos. It's positive, negative, negative, positive. So that's the stuff we're talking about. That's my method. You can have a different method than me. I, um, I make no claims that mine is the only one. So what this means, right, is that 
I'm supposed to exhibit three vectors where the angle is bigger than 90 degrees between all three vectors. You guys see that? But it's always the smallest angle between them, so it can't be above pi radians, isn't it? Uh, let's see. So it certainly has to be, they have to be more than 90 degrees, right? Yeah. There has to be an obtuse angle between them. You guys all see that? What I'm saying is that it can't be 270 degrees because that's just 90 degrees in the negative direction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it has to be obtuse, whether you look at it this way or that way, right? Yeah. Um, and I guess I have this, I, I screwed something up here. Do you guys see what I screwed up notationally here? Anybody? What if it is 90? Oh, it's zero. Then it's zero. So we're very strictly not allowed. 90, right? So these should, these should just be big old, big fatty less thans. All right. So um, I'm going to pick somewhere to start with. Um, I'm going to pick here because math traditionally starts here. And then if I'm to have, I'm going to call that my vector u. You guys with me on that guy? Now, where can the vector V fit? In the second, or yeah, second quadrant. Yeah, it can be in second or third quadrants. I'm gonna try third. to make it as close as I can just cause I'm kind of reasoning my way through this. So I'm gonna think about it's like Wait. just barely off the Y axis. Did we start this problem before and then not finish it? Because I feel I like, so. oh, I feel like we did a problem really similar to this a few classes ago. I have no uh, recollection got, of this, but I, I have no it. recollection of most okay. things. So, okay. Um, okay, so I have my vector u. I have some proposal for a vector v. You guys see that? Now, my question is, is it possible for me to put a vector somewhere in here that has a more than 90 degree angle with V and still has a more than 90 degree angle with W or with U? Yeah. I think so. Seems like I could just do this guy. Right? And then they're all mutually obtuse. What's a good choice for those angles? Like if you had to pick. Two pi over three, something like that. Two pi over three. Um, yeah, because that would be more than 90. Yeah, I mean, that seems reasonable, right? You just split the two pi into three equal pieces. Yep, exactly, 120, 240 degrees. So that'd be an option. Um, what else could you do? You could do pretty much anything else, right? <laughs> like, Feel yeah. free to make some choices. Um, they need to be more than 90 and then that's your only restriction, right? Is that each subsequent or that each angle have or that each pair of vectors have an angle more than 180 and smaller than two or sorry, more than 90 and smaller than 270. So, you know, you do you, right? If you wanted to make these angles uh, basically vertical up, basically vertical down, just a both of them tip just a little bit towards the left and zero, that would be fine, right? So kind of think zero, 91 degrees and negative 91 degrees. This would also be fine. You guys see that? Um, am I provided, like, have I provided adequate directions for these vectors right now? 
I think so, yeah. I mean, I think you guys could figure it out, but do do realize, right, that in order to actually finish this problem, you should have explicitly something like U is one, zero. Oh, and I guess if we're doing this in linear algebra class, we should be saying one, zero. And V is, what are the X and Y coordinates for this V? Probably like negative one, two or something. Mm, just don't be afraid to just use cosine and sine. Oh. Be like, shit, I don't know. It's cosine of 120 degrees and sine of 120 degrees. And then what's W? I like the negative angle of that, like doesn't matter really. Yeah, um, one way you could do it is cosine's an even function and sine's an odd function. But you know, you do you. you. Guys, good with this. And honestly, on this one, I mean, the explanation here is most of it, right? So my explanation for this one would be, I need to explain this reasoning. I need to draw this picture, and then I need to exhibit these items. You guys good with me on that? And then some of the rest of this crap you wouldn't need. Good to go? Mm-hmm.